Yes, well, it's, it's a real surname. We haven't bought it or borrowed it from anyone else. But um, it comes from my father's side, which actually came from England. It's a very nautical name. You need to remember that Blackbeard the Pirate, he, his nickname was Blackbeard. His name was actually Edward Teach. And yes, Edward is also a family name in our, in our family. But yes, it's, it's coincidence that it's so close together. So Yacht Port was envisaged totally by my father, Brian, to build a dedicated yacht handling facility for uh, Cape Town area. Because at the time we had also our own vessel and we struggled to actually maintain it and service it properly. And uh, so we saw opportunity from you know, the lack of facilities. Uh, at the time, we looked all over the, the Western Cape for a suitable site to build a facility. And of course, with the lack of protected harbors and bays, etc., there's very limited choice. Then we found a suitable protected bay in Saldana. And from there, we decided to build the facility to world-class standards, not just uh, the bare minimum. You could say it was maybe done, I think, too well. So the industry could then catch up. We're still busy realizing that. The facility, I think, is still a premium, world-class facility. We also built a, a, a large shed, the basic, the largest shed that's available to, to yachts in, I would say, South Africa to be able to drive in a vessel and lay it down for intensive maintenance and repair and spray painting. That shed also houses the crane as well, which ensures we keep our maintenance in check because it, we install, we're still in the sea, which is very corrosive. <laughs> we have our, our own core team of workers that can deal with outside general haul outs and bottom works. Thereafter, when the jobs become bigger in terms of spray painting and uh, mechanical works and uh, large composite repairs, there are other specialists that we can bring into the site. For that reason, I hope you are. We are adding a good value to the yacht repair industry and also the boat building. We deal with a lot of um, all different types of yachts, different shapes, styles, weights, configurations. And every time it's a, it's a learning process. And it's very um, enriching and rewarding for them in that sense. Working in the, in the yachting sector, the best and the worst part is uh, the owners. Probably the one that stands out for me the most, that I have the most admiration towards, is we once had a 61 foot swan come visit, which had an American sailor on board. He was a solo sailor and he was 85 years old. And he was completing his fourth circumnavigation around the world. And we found that very impressive. and. Um, the stories he told us, etc., and he was still nimble in doing his thing, and and um, commanding such a vessel around the world. Massive admiration for that. We were approached by Art Matthews to help him um, repair a yacht that he just recently acquired, which turned out to be the very famous Howard Davis, which is a famous sail training vessel for the Merchant Navy. I understand in South Africa. So it was quite a, an honor for us to, to be considered for that, but I also considered that we were one of the few places to actually do the works that he needed to do. And then during this process, hard lockdown also happened, <laughs> which then delayed the whole project because we weren't allowed to be at work with them, couldn't work on the boat, etc. We did a, we supported him well to actually repair the vessel practically. And now the vessels are, I would say, seaworthy and good to go for another 10 years. I absolutely love working um, on yachts. As I said, every day is a new challenge. Every vessel has a different, unique problem. Even identical vessels can have different problems. And um, you have to be, you have to think on your feet. You have to also apply um, other knowledge as well. And you have to also ask people. You have to consult with people. You have to do your own research. And uh, for that reason. You, you can't be bored, but for sure, if an area becomes available in Cape Town, for sure, Cape Town still needs it in addition, I would say.